God is a God who searches for the lost. In the book of Genesis, we read of how after Adam and Eve had succumbed to temptation, God searches for them. Where are you, says God? The people whom God had made had, on account of their actions, become lost. But God still loved them, and his heart was broken as he called out to them, Adam, Eve, where are you? You can hear in his tone the pain of unrequited love. Where are you? I love you. We humans are forever getting lost and God who loves us is always searching for us, always looking for us, always reaching out to save us. Surely then it is no surprise that when Jesus talked about God in Luke's Gospel chapter 15, he talked about searching. He talked about a woman who searched for a lost coin. He talked about a father who searched and looked out for and reached out towards not one but two lost sons. And he talked about a shepherd who searched for a sheep that was lost. Jesus told these stories because some people had forgotten that God is a God who searches for the lost. And he invites us to join in that search. Luke says that all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. Now take note, Jesus the good shepherd was doing his job. He was finding and reaching out to the lost. But the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. When the scribes and the Pharisees talked about sinners, they lumped together everyone who they thought did not know or did not observe the Jewish laws. And they taught that it was not right, in fact, that it was indecent for a teacher like Jesus to recline for a meal in the company of such sinners. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. But Jesus says, You know, you're right. I am guilty as charged, and not only do I welcome them, but I go out into the streets and shower them with affection, urging them to come in and eat with me. The scribes and the Pharisees would have been shocked. So Jesus told them a story about a shepherd. Now, shepherding was one of the trades listed by the rabbis as one that no law-abiding Jew should teach their children, for in the judgment of the rabbis, it was impossible to keep the law and be a shepherd. Even in this country in medieval times, a shepherd would be buried with a strand of wool in their hand so that when they pitched up at the pearly gates, the reason why they missed church so often was clear for all to see. So shepherds at the time of Jesus were regarded with suspicion. They were regarded as outsiders. So Jesus begins, which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he's found it, he lays his on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Which of you, having a hundred sheep? Jesus addresses the scribes and the Pharisees as if they were the shepherds. He will have nothing to do with their apartheid society that treats shepherds as outcasts and as those who cannot be trusted. There are no clean and unclean professions, no insiders and outsiders. There are just people, and God loves them all. And having already challenged their prejudices, Jesus now does something else quite challenging. In the Middle East, people spoke in such a way as to not blame themselves when things went wrong. No one says, I lost my sheep. You say, the sheep went away from me. I did not miss the train. The train went without me. I did not drop my cup. My cup fell from my hand and so on. You would never blame yourself and say, I have lost my sheep. But Jesus does blame the shepherd. The shepherd has lost the sheep. Jesus is saying to the scribes and the Pharisees, you are the shepherds of Israel. You have lost your sheep. I paid a price to go after them and bring them back. And now you come complaining to me because I have compensated for your mistakes. But even though the shepherd is implicated, the sheep is not wholly without blame. You see, the failed leadership and the willful wandering of the people were all part and parcel of why the flock had gone astray. So, there is a sheep missing. Where I have previously lived, sheep were a very common sight. And I have to tell you that they do get lost. You see, they keep their heads down and they nibble the grass, moving around as they do so. And when they eventually look up, they often have no idea at all where they are. And then, if they are really badly lost, they will panic and probably get into even more difficulty. Sheep, unless they're the hill sheep like Herdwicks, are born with very few survival instincts. If a lost sheep is not picked up and carried back, 
then it will die. So the shepherd has to seek and save the lost. Now a grown sheep weighs around 70 pounds and if it is lost and paralysed through fear then that would be dead weight. So the shepherd hoists this heavy weight up onto his shoulders. It's a powerful picture of redemption. In fact before the cross became for Christians a universal symbol of redemption in about the fourth century a picture of a shepherd carrying a sheep was a common symbol of the costly love of Jesus for those whom he is saving. The story ends with a shepherd coming home and calling together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. He calls together his friends and neighbours, just as the woman who had lost her coin calls together her friends and neighbours, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that was lost. And just as the father who had lost his son said, Let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. All the stories end with a party, with eating and drinking, which is what Jesus had been accused of doing, eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus was celebrating the restoration of the lost. Come, he says, rejoice with me, for these people were lost and now they are found. The question that Jesus leaves us with is, will you join this celebration? Do you have a heart for the lost? And will you join in the search for them? And when they are found, will you celebrate? Because fundamentally, that is what the church is. It is a continuation of that party. It is a gathering around the table of Jesus of those who once were lost and who were brought home, tail between their legs, carried on the shoulders of the Good Shepherd. We none of us deserve to be here. We none of us made it here by ourselves. We were lost, but Jesus found us, found the sheep that went astray. So inclusion, welcome and embrace are at the heart of the church. For to exclude anyone undoes the work of Jesus. It empties the cross of its significance and it puts us in the place of the Pharisees who decided for themselves who Jesus should and should not associate with. But what the story doesn't tell us is why the shepherd goes after the lost sheep. Granted, there were laws in which uh, that said whose fault it was if a sheep went missing. But there probably weren't any witnesses. The shepherd could say that he was attacked by a horde of beasts. Perhaps the shepherd goes after the lost sheep because he loves the sheep. That must be part of the answer, but if it were the whole truth, then the shepherd wouldn't hold a party, more a candlelit dinner for two. There is something here about the reputation and the character of the shepherd. The shepherd wants people to know that he has saved the sheep, that saving sheep is what he does. And so it is with God. God wants you to know that he is a God who seeks and saves the lost. God is by nature a missionary God. David Bosch said there is church because there is mission, there is mission because God loves people. And this missionary God invites us, calls us to join in this mission. Never forget that the church's call is to search for those who are lost, to love them and to guide them that they may be saved through Christ forever. But if Jesus were to tell the story of the lost sheep today, then the shepherd would discover that it's not just one sheep that's missing, but over 90 of them. And a fair number of those who are left are, to be fair, getting to the mutton stage. Maybe some have not strayed far and they can be encouraged to come back home. But if we are honest, 60 or 70 of them are not even of the sheepfold. They have neither eaten our grass nor wandered over our landscape nor strayed onto our pasture ever. As George Lings, one of the authors of Mission Shaped Church, put it, maybe what we need to do is put all the existing sheep in the fold, tell the regional shepherd not to panic, ensure the door is secure, find a substitute shepherd, tell them how they like their Sunday grass and how to put up with their perpetual bleating and decaying feet. Then the shepherd should take themselves off to a course on finding lost sheep and another one on creating fresh expressions of sheepfolds. Ah, says George, how easy it was in Jesus's day when only one got lost and you could expect all the rest to take care of themselves. But God is still a God who searches for the lost. He is the hound of heaven, as Francis Thompson wrote. And he calls us, all of us, to join in the search, to seek the lost, and to welcome all of them home. Amen.